Let me start with a blessing. Blessing. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, what's your story? So I came you, through land. Okay, you came through land. Okay. Uh, just tell us from the beginning as much as you can tell today. Okay. Is it all? Um, is it how the journey started? Or yeah, in, in the beginning from Nigeria, what motivated you to leave? That's the first story. Right. <laughs> it's an adventure. Okay. <laughs> it's it's an adventure. Just just one minute. Just one minute. Oh, it's a big story. It's a story that touches that punch. <laughs> Where the God start from me now? What I can't do? <laughs> yeah, so so the journey starts from Nigeria. Yeah, the journey starts from Nigeria. Yep. Um. Yeah. Think, um, which which place in Nigeria first of all did you say? Okay, I think of uh, moving. Uh, is in Benin. In Benin, okay. So, in Benin, it started, you have to make preparations. Yeah, the journey goes like this. Normally, I don't have it in mind. I've never been in Europe. I never hear news about Europe. Yeah. First. So, as a village girl, wait, why, bro, John, they look me like that. We close your eye, mad is talking. <laughs> but they write my story. I traveled to Taraba State, then I came mm. back to Benin, my base. Yeah. Then one morning, I, I left the house to work. So I was at work when one Aboki guy called me, blessing, blessing, blessing. I speak Hausa language. It was like, your house don't burn, your house don't burn. So I was like, which house? He said, the place you stay is now. I was thinking maybe it's a joke. Then I came up from my working my working place. Then I looked up. The smoke was really big. So I rushed down to the place. Everything was gone. I was there when the, the light dropped inside my own room. I was like, I'm with nothing except the clothes that's on me. Then I fainted. Everybody was like, this is outside again. She's gone. No, she's not. No. So I came back to life again. And the, everything in this world, like, it turned outside that you know imagine you just left home and then between uh two hours then something has happened and one thing i one thing one the old people we are saying they were like if 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 uh if not that i went to work if i, in, I was still being in my room because i always lock my door and being in my room be indoors i don't have friends so they were like they thank god that i even went to work this thing happened then I, I stayed no house, no money, not nothing. Then I went back to my working place. Then I meet my boss. Then I like, this is what I'm going through. Then I call him. He was like, eh, don't worry. If I came back to uh, Benin, pot and uh, some dishes. I was like, give me pot to go and cook in where I don't even have that ration. So the um, the manager was like, okay, they will give me a room in the hotel because I work as a cook in the hotel. Mm -hmm. Give me a room in the hotel so that I will be staying there in every evening. Then in the data I will be working. Then I start living there. But the manager was like, anytime I'm not around, we're going to the room and searching all my things, little things that people were giving me. So people were sewing clothes for me, so I'm buying clothes for me. So my mom was like, come back home. I said, hmm, I've left home since 12 years. I can't even go back without clothes. So it's better I die here. So I stayed in Vini. I was working, I have a um, I have a colleague there. She's trauma. So she work, we work together as a cook in the hotel. Then she um, she said, blessing, come and stay with me. And I, I hate staying with people. That is the only thing I don't like in life. Then she really forced me, forced me, forced me. And the way the manager was just doing one or two things in the hotel, then I just like decided to go and stay with my girlfriend. Then when I went there without clothes, <laughs> one bag, one shoe. So I was wearing the clothes, she's fat. I would just wear the thing anyhow, just bend the thing, still going to, to work. Then she was, I was really think and start thinking a lot of stuff we we're going through my head, but I never have the thought of travel. So she, with the house where she live in, there is one rural woman there that she was like telling, telling her that uh, she has connection of traveling. 
then uh, if I if I would like, or maybe if I would like to go or something, I said, me, I have never been there. I've never heard a story about Europe or somewhere because I never discussed it with anybody before. So that would be my first time to hear about traveling to Europe. So then the first connection that came is what uh Ghana and I said hey, me I can't leave Ghana in Nigeria I went to Ghana now I can't even go then I decided I said I'm not going so they were like okay France I say okay France I had this to add the thing we happen then I did not explain how it goes then I never I, I asked them how the journey we actually moved they were like how we carry us from uh, Bini to um, to Abuja then to Kano then to Jigawa and Abuja, Kano, Jigawa, I know that place. I, I've, I've, I've traveled down to the uh, boundary between Niger and Nigeria because I was selling plantain before. Mm-hmm. So I now say, okay, that, that is simple, simple thing. I know those roads, now is my road. Then when we get there, then, then they now took us to where they took us to and do whatever they wanted to do and tell us whatever they wanted to tell us. Then I, this decision, it was really hurt for me to do that came decision from home that I'm coming to Europe, actually, because I never thought of it. It's not that something happened to me that I'm left with no, I don't even thought of thinking of coming to Europe because it never been my decision at all. Then I decided, and I told my girlfriend, I was like, I will not tell anybody in my family because they would never allow me to do this kind of thing, never. They, were, they better come, they would come and pick me up from, where I am, then I told that I'm going. Then I I die. Let me die if I save. Let me because they told us the journey is 50-50. So I already put my mind that I know maybe I'll go and we survive. Mm. So the journey start. They bring they brought boss, then the boss pick us up, then drop us in the in the Abuja. Then we get to Kanu. Then from Kanu, they drop us, they put us in one hotel. I couldn't sleep. Because I was listening to something, chon, 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 how they will sell, how weird they will pass. So I was like trying to catch everything together with Hausa language. Then they not ask us to leave. Then we start leaving. I think we leave four, 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 four group people. Then they they drop us down to one village between, uh, I think it's, um, it's not the village, you know, you know, between Nije and uh and jigawa states and nigeria then they drop us inside jigawa states then the bike now start picking up one after the other so the because bus can't cross the border because they pass through bush when they get into some area they were like they are controlling them they throw us inside one uh, a, a farm then we are like oh, don't talk don't talk so they carry us please uh, excuse me i'll be back in a minute, please. Okay, okay. They drop us in Jigawa. In a, in a, we enter Niji, border of Niji. Then it was really hurt. Um, they asked us to give them money. How they will bought us from the border to to um to Deze. Then we we, we pay the money. Then they pack us like Sansa, put us inside the bus like. We depress everybody. Then they carry us down to Niger. When we get to Niger, then they drop us there. The place they drop us, oh my goodness. Oh, oh no. They drop us in a place. We are just staying there, not coming out. In the night, we will be battled with mosquito. In the daytime, fly. Ah, just to, if you are eating, we're just trying to, in case not to you, we all eat. So, we are there like one week, then we are because we are like talking to them if they have sell out or something, or we are still safe or something. So everything we are just going, going, going. <coughs> After two weeks, they, they take us from that place directly. We enter the journey of life. Mm-hmm. We enter the desert. So the beginning of the desert, many things, many died. <coughs> Many buses in the desert is really, but in my own uh, bus, no one died because first one just run mad and they said they would throw her away into the desert and I told them <coughs> to die inside this bus. 
So we are just praying, 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 praying. The girl came back, then another person, just one after the other. Day and night, uh, they treat they treat us like um, slave. They will drop us in Abway. They will tell us to push the um, the bus. The bus. They will just push it. They will be flogging us, pushing it. They will be flogging everybody. They will just flog and we will push, push, push past the sand. Then they will say, hey, 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 if you are not fast to enter, they will just left you inside that that uh, desert. They will just be going. They don't care. They are just treating like we are not non, we are not human being. They treat us like animal. Then we start the journey started day and night, day and night, day and night for a good five days. The desert, no water. Even there is a well there. They say somebody fell inside, died. It's even smelling. People are still drinking the water. I mean, we even pass. We drink the water before they even start telling us. And we can't even vomit because we don't have water, no water, no food in the desert. So some people die. We see a lot of skeleton of people. We saw a lot of dead body, fresh one, old one, di different, different, different. In the night, we will see somebody's coming. Before you know, you will disappear. I, I will just be seeing little, little draft, little people. Little, I'll say, God, I don't want to see again. I'll be crying. People, and many people will be running mad, many people will be shouting, a lot of stuff, a lot of drama, actually, in the desert. Then finally, 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 we get to Libya. Then they drop out at Saba. We never knew they sold us out. So the, um, the place they sold us to, they now put us in the prison. <laughs> Another journey of life again. In that prison, I saw what I never saw in my life because the thing, middle of desert, I we made some. Um, actually, we made. I, I forgot some stuff. We made some uh, army. They will rape the girls. They will flog the boys. They will rape the girls. They will flog the boys. So getting to one stage, I like they were just flogging all the girls. If you don't have money, they will rape you or they will flog you. Then I told them I don't have money. Then one was like, "Hey." Omausa, Omo Yoruba, you, you, you come. Everybody like, did they know I said I don't know them? And the, the man was like, he knows me. I said, I don't know you. I never met you before. And I, I speak also, I speak Yoruba, but I never, it was like shouting, shouting. Then they give us food. Then I told them, I said, I want to go back to Nigeria. Okay. They start laughing, say, you won't go back to Nigeria. I say, I'm tired. And this journey, we don't even know where we are going to. We don't even, we can't even go back, we can't go from, we're just in the center, in the middle of nowhere, no house, no water, no rain, nothing, nothing. You can't even see human, you can just see people there, see like animal or they're just ghosts. Then we get to this, they saw lot actually, that place in the prison. We met people that spent 40, uh, uh, two years, five years, four years in the prison. I saw one guy, very young guy, he's turned to skeleton. Because mm. if you don't have money to bail yourself, they will flog them. Every money they do flog them, that flogging is their breakfast. Imagine a grown up man that left home, ending up in somewhere. They will be flogging them every morning and say it is breakfast. This girl lean, all of them, I just, I entered the place, I was like, what? They are no longer human beings, they don't give them food, they don't even give them anything, they don't even <coughs> give them human beings. Some even died, they would throw them out. They are close to that, they would throw them out, they will die, they will all burn them. Many Nigerians are suffering, many African countries are suffering in Libya, a lot, a lot are suffering there. They will use the girls to do prostitute in that place. If you don't have good burger that will come and bail you out. <coughs> we spent just three days. I was just crying. We spent just three days in that place. I saw heaven. I never eat since I left Nigeria. I say I would never eat anything because everything was just crazy. I was tired crying. These people are dying. People sell their brothers just because to get money to save themselves. After four days, they bail us out of that place. Then the journey started. We went to our burger's place. We stayed for one week again. Then one day they just came and they pick us up from there to Tripoli. Then we 
we'd never have been in Tripoli because they just drop us halfway. Then the place they drop us, we don't <coughs> even know where we are going. We don't even know where we are because it is a, a, a Arabian country. You can't just come outside. You can't go and do anything. You have to cover yourself. You have to dress like them. You have to be like them. Then they not drop us where that where they used to train goats. We now becoming goat brother and sister. <laughs> so we still we stayed there. No food. The math person that we even made, they don't always just like because I speak outside, so it's more easy for me because I was not suffering like others. Then I will use the language to bring some things and try. Then one Arab woman came in, then that one not help us bring buy some food stuff and come and dash us. So if the women are coming, the men, the guys that be among us, they have to go and hide because they don't have right to see the Arab women face. It's forbidden. They may kill them if they find out. So it's really, it is not a good journey, actually. Then, and we stay three days there. We can't even call. There's no network. There's nothing. Don't even have anything to do. So God so kind, another group now join us. Then they now brought this, uh, this, this big Lawrence that they used to, to, to carry smet in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. They now lie us. Like the way they lie dead body in the grave. <coughs> that is how they lie us down. Then just jumping, we sleep on top of each other. Then now use scalloping to cover us. Like see if they carry goose. Hey, journey of life. Then we start. When they get to check check it point, there will be point they will say, we will not talk. We need some fence. We don't have strength. <coughs> you can't even look up. We don't even know where they carry us to. If they even carry us to go and kill us, we don't know. We are just there praying inside our heart, God, please, God, please. Then after the they don't drop us in another place. They now ask some boys to bring small, small cars to pick us up from there. Then they carry us like five, five. That one, the boys are even driving us that night. And this thing I'm talking is at 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m. They're just driving us. We don't even know where they, they pass. They pass uh, desert, another desert again. They drive also while some trying to rape some girls. They are starting, they start fighting. We're just praying, God, please help us. Then we get to, to seaside. No? Then drop us. Then they don't drop us in another place. Another car came again to pick us up again. That place that they drop us again, we met some Nigerian girls there. Oh my goodness. And the boys, they are using them as a slave. Those who are, they will just ask them to use their hand to uproot grass where they don't even plant anything. That is just the punishment. Nothingness. They will just be uprooting grass in the morning. No food. That's what they're using them. The girls are using them. <clears throat> to bring man for them as are uh, to enter inside. They will sleep with them without condom and stuff. And we start crying. We are just, just came newly. We are just like, is, it, is, is this life we are going to live where we are going to or something? So the girl was like, she 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 don't used to smoke before. She don't used to drink before. Is this situation that make me start smoking and drinking and doing all these things. Some of them have HIV. No hospital, nothing, nothing, nowhere to go, no police station to report them to because they just put them in one place and cage them there. I start crying. Me, I cried though. I cried all the movement. I was just crying because the way I see that, I can't, you can't help. There's nothing you can do. Then before we know, we, <clears throat> my journey actually, because I we, we are really lucky. We never meet the kind of people they are rising, sleeping with them, or doing one or two things, or try to sell. They sell out once, but it never happened again. Then we left there, they now put us in the boot. They will remove seat, they'll put us on that seat of car. Then we will lie down there, not talk, we'll carry to cross the border to seaside. So that night, when we get to seaside, some people were like, start blessing people that knew me before. They were like, this place, did they rape them for nights? See, Naomi, I, I saw them putting all women yes. So I was like, why people we put all they say this is how they just used to dress in the night because these boys will come and sleep with them and rape the girls. And I start crying, I say, not again. So this journey is not even end here. So I was telling the Boga like, please, can you cross me this night? Because there is space for them to cross people that night. He said, they never even pay your money. You say you should cross you this night. Who can't cross him? 
I said, me, yeah, I'm not going to stay here because I hear that they they used to rape and they don't want to hear that word. So the man I said, before I spoil the issue for them, they should just put me and remove the thing. I don't know how it happened, but they remove theory boys that pay their money, use their money to cross me and and two girls that follow me. Choma sister, my girlfriend, Nigeria sister, and the woman, the woman that connect us to this journey, her daughter to John. Then I told them, they said, I, I will be the only person who will cross. Then I told them, I have two sisters, so I'm not going to leave them here. Because without me, they can't even stay. So then I said, of course, for that one, I'm not going to go. I said, it's better. Then after the man I called me, I said, okay, you and your sister can go. Then these three boys will stay back. Then we left that night. Hey, they took us to seaside, see or see water, see or see entirely. Then I asked question, how long will this take? They said it's just two hours. Can't you see in Tali Light? I said, ah, yes, in Tali Light is very close now. <laughs> Don't know that. It is the sea that they see in also. Oh, then they put us in. They took us. Took. This is how we sit. You don't even, you can't, you can't touch anybody. I think the way you just sit like this, you just cut like this for how many hours? We don't even know how many hours. We don't even know if we even survive, self. Then we are 150 people inside the boat. They started the boat. The journey started. We move, we move, we move, we move, we move. They break. In the midnight, around, uh, because they push us around at 12 a.m. Then around 4 in the morning, their policemen now came. They, they, they control us on top of the sea, ask us to go back. And we're already close to the, we already moved close to rescue team. Uh, entirely rescued them, so they would rescue us. If they return us back again, <laughs> and the boat already start leaking, we don't even know if we are we are going to perish inside the sea. Then they carry us go back. I don't know who called because they just called and said um, they already settled. Then we should go back again, six o'clock in the morning. Then we start the journey again. We start moving. We start moving. We start moving. We start journey five uh, twelve a.m. <laughs> money from our uh, seaside in Libya before we see rescue team in the second day around four before we see and before we even saw rescue team our boat already leak start leaking and a lady give birth that night I we just left she give birth inside the boat it was really bad and I I will I remove my shirt I give it to her to cover the baby everybody was just trying to cover the baby then we get to rescue team, they rescue us, they rescue the girl. So they asked me because I carry the baby inside the boat because everybody is just crying, everybody is tired. And the sea water is a salt water, it hurts people like foil, it hits people, it hurts people a lot. Then I carry the baby, they don't like rescue us inside the ship. When we get in, they asked me to go inside where the nurses and the doctors stay because I carry the newborn baby. Then the girl placenta is still inside her stomach because she can't even, we can't do anything inside the because everybody is trying to survive. So we are just praying that God, please, this use baby, use if even though it's just because of this baby, just survive us, we will not die here because of this news baby. Then we get in, then the doctor asked me if I have any idea because I've been living with my mom, giving delivering women. Then I said, okay, I have some idea. Then we put the lady on bed, then we push her, her placenta just came out. The uh, Italian man like, are you a nurse? I said, I'm not a nurse. He said, you do magic because here is just oppression. And I said, <clears> been, <throat> or roughly to one day, how many hours this thing have been inside this girl? Me, she not go for me. <laughs> was to rest there. Rescue her. Then they, they, they asked me to follow her. And I said, no, I'm not following her to the speedboat to Italy because I don't even know her. So why should I follow her then? She pushed also. We spent four days on top of ship. The journey that they told us that is just seeing Tali. And the way you are moving, that's how you see Tali do. You say, see Italy just going and going to see. We, we reach Red Sea, Blue One, Yellow One, no, uh, Mountain, Slow, Slow. <laughs> A lot of drama on top of sea. Then we get to Italy. That's how the journey goes. On the 1st of September, we enter Italy. Then they scatter everybody, put them in the camp. The journey never stopped there. The journey started again. 
you have to come to carry you and um, i left i left there and then i came to france i left italy alone ne- nobody came to pick me up no paper nothing nothing i was just me and god so the journey i don't even know how i get to uh, france i left italy then i and i bought a ticket they also send me money to buy a ticket i don't even know where to buy a ticket for i met someone then i asked question some one boy that i even met in nigeria but he wanted to even <laughs> divert me to another place you see how people are also in in, in the western world you just trying to divert me to another germany to go and uh, i you just i would just go germany every to go i like i don't even know you why would you carry me to, to germany to go and do what i'm going to france so that's where i'm going to Then I bought tickets, I took the train, second train. In the train, I was asking questions. Oh, my prayer is that they should not control me. But then told me if they control me, they would deport me because I don't really have right to leave the camp. Then I left. Turn, 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 turn. I got to Nice. When get to the border too, some guys are even using it to do business. Then they, they put, I stay in that bush with them. They are in the bush, oh, guys, they are just in the bush. Crossing girls from border to Nice. So I stay with them because I arrive. Me, I like to cook. So I start cooking for them, bros, 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 bros. And I made one guy there speak Yoruba. So I speak Yoruba. And I want Nipo girls also speak outside. We're all speaking everything. They were like, okay, they will cross this gate. Then they cross me. And we enter Nice. That night, I don't know anybody that's not trained for me to move to Paris. I have to stay in the street. Mm. I just stayed in the street. The person that is not controlling me was like, hey, he, he, he just go stuff for road, do anything, don't do anything else. They don't say, what thing that they do, what I go do? I, I risk my life from Nigeria. I, he just ended the call because I was explaining the kind of stress I've gone through. Like, what kind of Europe is this? If I, this, I, I told myself, I will carry my son and give police and go back to Nigeria because I don't care anymore. Because the life is something less than, One guy now met me said, uh, he now took me to hotel. I said, I'm not going. He said, no, he wanted to rent the hotel for me just to stay. And day break, I can go and look for. And I get it, I said, I should bring my paper. And I sat lying, I said, I, I, I forgot it too. And I now came back. I stay in a place, day break. Then I entered the train station. I bought tickets from this thing. Then I moved to Paris, from Paris to Lyon. Hmm. What an adventure. Uh, yeah, to so Leon. My name was Leon. The story mm-hmm. never ended there. But mm-hmm. someone that brought me actually, and they want me to do the normal job that people are doing, and I told them I'm not doing it. It was worse. Really, I, I, the reason I just made up my mind, I said I'm not going to do this. Imagine the stress people go through. Imagine people that died in the desert. I told her if I died, in there, we used to be asking of money. Saying I say, me, I risked my life a lot, and I went, I left home with a lot of money. I left with my own personal money to use to sell two roads so that they would not be raping and stuff. Then I told her, I said, if I died, will you ask of money? Say no. If I carry sickness, will you ask of money? Say no. But if I still alive, we will still ask of money. Say yes. Okay, allow me to use my mind. If you don't want, I'll go and meet police and go back. And I went to police station. I told them I'm going back to Nigeria. Nobody knew about this. I went to police station one night. I told them I'm going back to Nigeria. <coughs> they said that they don't have right to deport me. Then they asked me which church I'm going to say, Pastor Abash. They called him to come and pick me up. I was still crying. I cried for two weeks in Lyon. I cried for good two weeks because I don't want to do what they want me to do. And I don't even have direction. I don't even have place to go. I don't know anybody. I don't even know who to call. And nobody would like to put you in, in their house because of the people too, for them not to carry bad name and stuff. So the thing was like, it was blocking everywhere for, for me. So the person when they brought me actually just saw me one day was like the very day she saw me what she come up and say what do you define for Europe? <laughs> you know if you do this thing we carry your coin you know if you do one that's what she said. I can't I I will never forget that word like you can't do this. I was still really <coughs> why would she just say this word? So, then she really understand the kind of person I am actually. Then I told her okay one day they now call me this has to leave the house. I don't even have direction. I, I carry my bag and I went to church. I said, me, I don't come. I won't come to the year. My just the year, my all die for Christ's neck, like this, like this. <laughs> then 
I I made up my mind I would never do it. I actually I'd never do it, but I go through her. Yeah, because no one would seem to assist me because of them. So everybody we are like trying to protect themselves. Then I I actually go through a lot. I went to um Red Cross to do my boss card and I met one uh, one England girl. She's working as a social. Then I explained my situation. Then she she connects me to a family to help me. Then they create association because of me to help mm-hmm. bring people out of the street, put them in one place and stuff. So I was staying with French people, French, 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 French. Then I landed myself with a friend as a, like a sister in church because the French people were like, I should leave church. Maybe I should choose between them and church. Then I choose church. Then they give me two weeks to leave there and then I left. Then one of my church members now picked me up, keep me in the house for three years and six months. Then after I got my job, I start staying alone, but the life is not really easy. A lot of rejects have come upon that. You still go to listen to us or paper, they will still give you rejects. Then they will see, I tell you what you give them is not real. That's not good evidence to prove the thing is real, so kind of stuff. So with that, life still goes on. In Europe, actually, it's a really easy journey of real life. Man, yeah. So, Thanks so much for the courage to tell this story <laughs> in the middle of your life. I was ready to hear my story. <laughs> yeah, you were emotional. But just one question I want to ask you. Okay. After this um, adventure, and the risk you took did this experience make you stronger today yeah it is it make me stronger it make me to make a decision that i should stand on my word because i'm not the kind of person if i tell you my no is no and my yes is always yes so i've made up my mind okay this is what i want to do maybe my life will be 50 50 and thank god i arrived safely so what would make me to come against god with my life to do one, what people are doing just to pay. How much are they paying? So if I even do, I will not even get the money because it's not my calling. So I just say, okay, let me just left them because of my situation. The getting to the road is not what they told us because they told us that getting to Italy, um, to Libya, cross to the sea, they will bring big ship, will be like a house. We will carry us cross. That's what they promised us. So I surprised I was seeing Bolo Bolo on top of river. So that, that that thing that thing really it changed my it changed everything that I told them about. I was like these people are trying to use people's life to put in risk, you know, understand like they never told us this this how the journey they are like <clears throat> journey is very sweet. Big ship like house will come will carry us view your entire entire. Then they now put on top of bolo bolo, then getting asked to go and do position to give them money for what? So I can't do it. Yeah. But the stress, the stress <coughs> alone is more than all. Yeah. It's, so that's it's an it make me strong actually but i would never advise any, any even my enemy to pass through this kind of stress just because you want to come to you yeah it made you stronger i can see it did. that's where you got your determination and um, a lot of risk a lot of risk here thank you so much for your story thanks so much for giving us your testimony and it's very important